Hello, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. As Kathy just said, you're all uh, technology folks, so you can understand <laughs> when a, a platform doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So thanks for your patience. Really, uh, really appreciate it. So this session, Contactless Ordering and Pay, is uh, facilita being facilitated by Kathy Alcaris, Director of IT for the Eureka Restaurant Group. Before the pandemic, the primary focus of restaurant operations was to provide great service to guests in the restaurant. For most of the companies that have been around for a long time, as well as some of the up and coming brands, they've been doing that really well. Uh, great training, delicious food, consistent performance on sequence of service and sense of urgency. However, with the fear of COVID from both consumers and businesses, the industry is now forced to think about safer dining at restaurants. This is where the need for contactless technology becomes a bigger consideration than ever before. But, excuse me, but how do we balance our excellent customer service with new technology and without losing human interaction? Kathy? Hi. Hello, everyone. I think people are still trying to come in. Um, hey, Susan. <laughs> okay, so we can get started just because uh, we have a limited time here. Um, I'm Kathy. I've been with Eureka Restaurant Group for um, almost a year. I think next week I make one year. <laughs> um, it's been a very challenging year. Um, I've been in the restaurant industry for 33 years, 14 of the years in restaurant operations, 19 years in restaurant IT, and 10 of the, those years were as a director of IT. So it's it's good to have both combination of operations and IT in my belt. <laughs> Can you see my screen? I think I have to share my screen, right? Hold on Correct. a second. Yeah, you just need to hit share screen. It's this one. I'm not showing my screen. Okay. Screen one. There we go. Can you see the screen right here? Yeah, okay. you're good, Kathy. Okay, awesome. Okay, so a little bit about Eureka. Um, Eureka is all about great food craft beer and small batch spirits, um, our guests should have a dining experience that leaves a lasting memories. And according to our website, leaving lasting memories, one burger at a time. And if you had our burgers before, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we have 24 locations, 15 in Southern California, five in Northern California. We have one in Seattle, Boise, Las Vegas, and Texas. And when I first started, we did not have an online ordering um, platform. It was actually part of the 2021 initiative. But, and before the pandemic, Eureka Restaurant's primary focus was to drive guests into our restaurants. But once we shut down our restaurants and during the pandemic, we, re we realized online ordering is essential to help increase sales. So we quickly jumped on the, the wagon and implemented an online ordering solution for our restaurants. Um, they were only limited to takeout and delivery for, gosh, how many months? It seemed like two years, but it's only a few months that we were on, <laughs> that we were on lockdown. Um, but we thought as soon as we will be allowed to open for in-person dining, we need something that will allow us to provide a solution aiming for the safety of our guests and our staff. Um, and we knew that we must have a truly integrated solution. Oops, sorry, I went too far. Uh, Okay. Um, so why contactless ordering and pay? Why, why wouldn't we just go back to table site ordering for our guests? The first thing we thought of is that we, we need to give our guests a safe and simple and seamless experience from the time they arrive until they leave our restaurant. And we wanted to make sure that this technology is interactive where they'll be able to browse the menu, place their orders without having to make a payment first. So how do we enhance the guest's experience with this solution? 
we started by keeping the check open so that they will be able to send their orders, request for refills, ask, add, add items to their orders, and pay when they want. I personally don't like being held hostage in a restaurant while waiting for the bill or waiting for your credit card to come back. So I, I truly admire this part of the, the payment platform. Um, the second thing is we want them to be able to call for our service. We want our guests to feel that this, this technology will still give them the human interaction um, needed when they have questions or if they have special requests, but at a much faster speed. And it is imperative that we must keep the human element intact. And this solution also gives us a guest. Um, this also the solution also gives the guests the option to control their speed of service. If you have a movie or show to go to, maybe not now, but in the future, if you have a movie or show to go to, or you have to go back to work, you can order your food and pay immediately. Or if you're on a date or on a meeting, um, you can take your time and control your own speed. Um, I found that I get my food much faster with this ordering solution because your order goes straight into the kitchen rather than waiting for a server to have to write down your order, maybe take another table's order, possibly run out some drinks before they can even bring your order in. So, you know, when new technology was introduced to our staff, the first thing they thought was, will this technology replace them, the human employee? And our answer was no, for our contactless dining, um, it is not the case. This is in place to enhance hospitality and assist with restaurant operations. Now they can redirect their focus on things, like other things that you normally don't have time to do when the restaurant's packed, like the accuracy of your food order, quality of food, the presentation of your plates, et cetera. Um, so we thought long and hard about making sure that both our guests and staff would be adaptable to and accept this technology. And we want to make sure that they know it will be a benefit to them. We did not want to put an app in place. Sometimes an app will compel the guests from participating. Um, we wanna keep the order flow as smooth as possible. Um, so for our technology, we wanted to keep it web-based. We wanted to make sure that we have beautiful food pictures that will make you want to order everything on the menu. Uh, we wanted to implement a solution that can, can, can be configured to serve our guests based on our service model. Uh, system for both in restaurant, we want a system for both in restaurant dining and takeout solution. It makes no sense to have two different solutions because sometimes um, taking our guests to different platforms will confuse them. They might order food for takeout at the dining or, you know, we just don't want to confuse anybody. And we just make want to make it smooth as possible. Um, and direct integration with POS is crucial. The last thing the restaurant needs is to have to re-enter all the orders from the POS, uh, from the tablet to the POS manually. So um, come to think of it, I don't believe that we have demonstrated our contactless order and pay solution public. Um, by that, I mean, we haven't showed how we use it for the guest facing platform, as well as how we use it as a team to run our day to day service operations. Um, so I guess this could be a premiere. <laughs> so let's go into uh, our contactless ordering pay. Um, we went live with a test location with the system in September for, for our test location would be Claremont. And we started rolling it out to all locations shortly after that. So what I'm gonna show you today is an overview of the guest facing technology, the Fireboard tablet and the smartwatches that we use for notification. Here's the next generation in one in guest engagement from OneDine. So this is the QR code scanning. It's a tile, we call them the tile. It's actually now our new POS. It's this point of sale where the guest uh, sees first for um, to see, to view their menu. And then we have the mobile menu browsing, simple yet effective tool. And then we have a simple yet effective, I mean, we have an interactive home screen and we'll go through this uh, in the next few slides. So how do we order, scan and pay? First, you approach a table. Uh, each table will have a QR code associated to that specific table number. Guests can begin ordering the ordering process in three ways. So first you can scan the QR code by opening your camera app and hovering over the QR code. 
Um, the second way to do it is if you can tap, if you have your NFC function turned on, you can tap your phone and it'll take you to the website that you need to place your order, or you can go to the website located on the bottom of the tile and hover over the QR code. It's actually gonna scan it for you. So once a guest hover over the QR code or taps the sensor, a link will pop up on the screen and you select the link, which will take you to verify your phone. And I'll explain to you why we have that in place. Once they enter their phone, a verification code will be sent to them to enter um, on, on the website. Once verified, they'll be taken automatically to our digital menu. And this process is only done once. Um, the phone verification will not be needed in future visits. So if you go to our Claremont location and then you happen to fly to Berkeley, you can go ahead and scan the QR code and it won't ask you to check in again unless um, you turn the private browsing on. So turn that off. <laughs> um, so now it, after you verify your phone number, it'll take you to the menu screens we have the beverages here. Naturally, we start with the beverages because uh, that way your guests can stick to the sequence of service that are used in the restaurants. Um, for instance, serve, the server takes your order, you get beverages first and then appetizers, entrees, refills, another drink and dessert. So here we go with the whiskey and then, then we start with appetizers and then the rest of the menu. I'm missing here the, uh, the kids menu which we call the little moochers. <laughs> so let me click on my favorite category, which is the burgers. In order to order a menu item, the guests will click on the item. And once they click on the item, they will be able to see the description and the option to place the order. Here's a bone marrow burger, which I eat not too often, but I, I like the best. Uh, just ignore the cal calories. Um, once you place your order, I mean, once you hit the item, you can select your sides and your temperature. All, we have required items like the temperature, the side items, and also modifiers if you want to add like a side of ranch dressing or maybe a truffle sauce. And if you want to add another order or modify, you can click on, click on the item again and they'll have a bag, actually an item here, number indicator click on the item and it's gonna allow you to modify or add another item to your order. Pretty simple. Now we go to um, ordering. This will give you a summary of all items ordered along with the option to remove any items. And when you're satisfied with all the items, you can hit order now to confirm the order and the order will be sent directly to the kitchen or to the bar if it's a beverage and the guests will receive a confirmation that their order has been placed. And throughout the dining experience, you'll get access to the home screen and there you go. The home screen will give you an option of items to choose from. Uh, we have joined the whiskey club. It will allow you to redirect to an external link for promotions or or other programs that you want to add in for your brand. We have our whiskey club that we sell uh, monthly. It comes in a basket and all these goodies are in there. You can check our website for what, what it is. We have non-boozy beverage refills. Guests can request beverage refills by selecting a non-alcoholic beverage refill that they previously ordered. So if you ordered a Coke, your Coke will show up there and it'll allow you give, to, give, to get a refill. Um, the order more, is where the guests continue to order more items as they want. And that's the reason why we keep the check open and we don't require them to pay until the end. Um, request a human is the coolest thing I've ever seen in this um, platform. If you want to reach out to a server for assistance, you can click on that button and the staff will receive notification on the tablet and on the smartwatch and someone will be right over. The Hoppy Hour, let's see, Browse Hoppy Hour will allow you to, to view the Hoppy Hour menu even outside of the Hoppy Hour timeframe so they can plan their next visit. Um, 
you check guests can find their or summary by clicking here. How my mouse is on? Right here. So when the guest is ready to pay, they can select the ready to pay button. Once the guest is ready to pay, they will select the click to pay option on the bottom of the home page, and they will be able to enter their credit card number. Uh, they can use Apple Pay, and now we have PayPal. A lot more people use PayPal than we thought, so it's it's a good platform to have. There are two other ways to pay. Say that the guest prefers not to do the self-ordering, it's okay. The server can place their order from a handheld and either use a text to pay or scan to pay option, um, which is what we call our hybrid ordering model um, because servers can take orders or you can have the guests do self-service. So the text to pay sends a guest a text to a link um, to make their payment from their phone. And this is why we ask them to verify their phone numbers. Scan to pay, the guest will have the ability to scan a QR code that's either shown on the ordering tablet screen or even printed on the guest check. And if absolutely necessary, and your guest has one of these, you can still take the credit card payment on the terminal. It's not working. Uh, so here's a re the receipt. Upon submitting payment, they will receive a confirmation page with an option to select text or email to receive a copy of the receipt. Don't look at what I eat. So now we go to the ordering tablet which and the fireboard. Once the guest places their order, uh, the order is submitted to the restaurant's POS and to the tablet fireboard. This allows them to easily manage orders and payments from simple from a simple tablet using OneLine's Fireboard management software. So we have two mounted in our restaurants, one at the grease stand and one at the beverage station and several more with cases and handles to use at the restaurant for table side service. So circled here in yellow, these two are the filters available to filter the check feed, the check feed below. And the left filter in progress is um, the check progression and the one on the right is the order type. So we can filter check progression by order status, uh, open or in progress, um, or you can show all errors. There's a feature um, status that so shows all orders that, that have pickup time for uh, future orders. Uh, we can show all complete orders and all canceled orders. And um, as far as the order type, we can choose all online ordering, walk up, call in, or table. Um, I I just leave it on all because I want to see everything. Um, these orange these items are the notification item. The icon on the left is going to blink and ding when there's a new notifi notification. It will ring both on the tablet and on the watch. Um, just tap on it to see what the notifications are, and then. On the right icon, it's, it's a mute button and it'll silence the uh, notification for a minute. Here is your check feed. This will display all the information related to your specific orders. So the mode will display um, the, di the difference between the online order versus phone, I attention, online order versus phone orders and takeout orders, is that right? Or walk up orders, I corrected. The number will display the guest phone number and check number. Okay, phone number, I masked it out and it starts a check number. Time is time of when the order was opened. Um, due date is the time when the guest will be picking up the order. Check-in, we're not using this part. It's when, um, I think it's for curbside. Um, also, I guess we can check in for takeout as well. Uh, deliver to is either the table number or the guest name. So guest name is for takeout, table numbers for dine-in. And it'll show here whether or not the guest has paid or has not paid. Just because if they have not paid doesn't mean they walked out it's because they could still be dining in at their restaurant. So. And, then, and then we got the check detail. When you tap on a check from the check feed, the check detail will populate with details of what the guest orders. This comes in handy when 
you have a party of three and only two of them have entrees in front of them, you can view what order is missing and run back to the kitchen to fulfill their orders. Um, this fireboard is also where you can do your, you can send commands for text to pay and scan to pay. Now let's go to the watch. So we use uh, the Samsung Tick Watch. It's um, fairly inexpensive, not ex expensive as a um, Apple Watch, and it works great. Uh, what we use it for is the managers and select job codes will be responsible for wearing these watches during their shifts in order to address alerts and notification. These alerts and notifications will be sent to both the watch and the tablet. So both team members and managers are responsible for assisting. Let me uh, take you to a couple of these uh, alerts and notification. ID check. If a table orders an alcoholic beverage and a team member or a manager, uh, a team member or a manager will have to stop by to verify their IDs. Um, they will need to either select, reject, or approve. So if you're under 21, you're going to get rejected. And if you're over 21, it'll be approved. And the server can you bring you your drink. Here we have requests for assistance. That's where you contact a human. Um, both the team member and the managers will be pinged on their watches and on a tablet. And it's gonna, it's gonna tell you table number two needs assistance. So someone will be immediately over to your table. My experience with this is that the team member comes by pretty quickly, um, much faster than when you hail them down you know, with your hand. Um, other alerts that I did not take a screenshot of, we have of alcohol consumption. If a device or a guest orders more than, I think, three alcoholic beverage in an hour, the alert will be sent to the monitor their consumption. And this should be completed by a manager. And this will help us, um, you know, <laughs> I don't have to say. But, um, but that's a good feature to have. Um, pay with gift card is another alert. We don't have our gift card integrated with this system. So when a guest has to pay for their meal with a gift card, we will have a server grab the gift card with gloves and manually run the card on the POS terminal. And then the credit card balance will be either paid by text to pay, they can scan to pay, or, um, or just scan the QR code from the table. There should be a remaining balance. And the notifications, um, card payment. This is where you can see that the guests had completed their payment on their check. If it says partial payment and you see that the table is empty, did they dine and dash? I don't know. But you can send them a text and, and tell them that um, it seems that the full payment has not been made on the check. Um, here's, a, here's a text for a link that you can pay, your, pay for your meal. Um, and then hit acknowledge to remove the notifications from the watch. So I know this is quick. Um, what are our key takeaways when determining if you want to implement your own contactless solution, um, oh, contactless order and pay solution? Well, first thing is don't just guide the guests to the table and leave them leave them be. <laughs> Ask them if they've been to your restaurant before and if they've had used this new ordering system before. If not, give them a quick tutorial and invite them to contact the server with a contact a human button from the homepage if they have any questions. Um, second thing is make sure your technology caters to both operations and to your guests based on your service model. Tell your guests about the contact the human button again and again and again and remind them that they can call for re um, call the service make a refill um, on, on the home screen as well. Uh, make sure that the order flow is seamless. Minimize the number of clicks that, I, that a guest have to go through to place their order or even to make their payment. Um, anticipating the guest need. This, uh, this is a great, excellent tip that came from our operations team and from OneDine. You gotta anticipate our guest needs. Does anyone look like they need assistance? Like a deer in the headlight kind of look. Uh, do you do a quick scan of the dining room and look for any confused or even worse, a frustrated face? Um, some other things to watch for is if the guests have been sitting at the table for a while and no, there are no drinks, 
or it looks like they have been sitting for a while with no food. Maybe they forgot to click the order now key. So help, help our guests and they will be happier that we have this solution. Um, I believe that we will need to keep a hybrid solution, a hybrid ordering model to allow our guests to choose the self-service with the scan or if they prefer, we can have a server take your order. We, we just have to do what we need to do to keep our guests happy. Um, the direct POS integration should be a non-negotiable. It'll keep the service productive and please don't make them re-enter the orders from the tablet to the POS. And um, because of the limited time, I wasn't able to show you everything that we have implemented from the solution from one line. But this is the major part of the scan order and pay solution that we've been using with one line. But feel free to look at our online ordering for any from any of our Eureka restaurant locations on our website. And um, I'll also leave my email address to answer all the questions that I'm not able to answer today. Um, and our website address will be on the next slide as well. So here we go. Do you have any questions? Do we have time for questions? Uh, we could probably have one or two, but um, again, we'll be sharing the presentations and the recordings. So if you all have questions for Kathy, um, this slide is part of her deck and, and will be posted next week. So you can reach out to her if, if you'd like to. Um, otherwise, thank you so much, Kathy. And again, apologies for the Zoom challenges. Um, took, <laughs> got all the way through to the end of the day almost and, <laughs> and then it decided, but uh, thank you so much. So at this point, we're gonna literally take a really, really quick break end this session, everybody can go grab the beverage of their choice and then jump into the closing session happy hour. Um, we'll just do a quick recap and, and raise our glasses um, to a successful day. So thanks all. See you in a couple minutes. Bye. Bye.